When I first started my architecture exams, I kind of just like dove in deep. I didn't have a community. I didn't have like a ton of people to relate to, to figure out what was going on. I just kind of did it. I was scrappy, just figured it out. Now, six years later, when I reflect on that journey, there's a couple things that I wish I would have known before I even started testing or when I first got started. So if you're just starting your ARE journey, then this one's for you. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, welcome to Design, Create, Inspire with me, Bryn Young. Thanks so much for being here. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Turn on that little bell. We have episodes come out every Tuesday and we talk all about architecture, exams, starting a business, all that good stuff. Now last week I came out with a just getting started in the architecture registration exam world. So if you just started out, that's a great episode for you. So go check out that now next. But today, this is also a good one for people who are just starting out, who are trying to figure out what this whole world is like, because believe me, it's a doozy. <laughs> so here's three things that I wish I would have known when I first got started. The first one is that failing is a part of the journey. Now, if you're new to me, I talk a lot about this subject, about failing the exams, about passing, all that stuff, because it's an important one. I have a ton of other videos that dive into this, so go check those out. This isn't an episode about failing, but it's something that I wish I would have known about early on and that I wish I would have known it's part of the process and that it's okay. Of course, even when we know it's okay, sometimes it still doesn't make it easy, but I wish I just would have known that and had the expectations. And it is hard. It's not, you know, something that makes it easier when you know that, but it does allow you to understand it so that you don't give up. Because a failed exam does not mean you're a failure or anything like that. And I wish I would have known that and understood that at a better level before I had even gotten started. I wish I also would have remembered that or known that eventually I would be licensed and I wouldn't even remember the failed exams. And so I wish that I would have really understood that and known that before I got in there and failed my first exam. Okay, number two. The other thing that I wish I would have known before I got started is that these exams can be really isolating. And again, I don't mean for these things to be like scare tactics or reasons to not get started, but just to be prepared and come up with plans for them. When I was taking my exams, I didn't really have anyone around me who was taking them. No one in my family could understand understand what I was going through. And so it made the process really isolating. And I didn't expect that when I first started. I kind of expected like, this is just an exam. I didn't feel isolated when I was in school or getting my degree or anything like that. But there was something about these exams that did feel isolating. I didn't have anyone who really got it and understood. And even people who maybe did, it was still difficult. And it was still my own journey that I had to go on. It's also something like when you tell people that you're going through these exams, you're gonna have people like, oh, you're still taking them? Oh, you didn't pass yet? Oh my gosh, haven't you failed that one like multiple times? Are they really that hard? <laughs> and I wish that I would have understood this and maybe come up with a game plan before I had even started because then I would have been able to know how to respond to that or maybe just been a little bit more restrictive with who I had told. So if you're just getting started, make sure that you find a community of people who really can support you and understand. I obviously am someone who has put myself out there as a support system, a mentor for people going through the exams so that you do have that community and that support. So I do have a ton of resources that you can dive into the exams community that you can come be a part of and participate in. This is something I'm just starting. I just started my community so that people like you can hang out with people like me who get it and are supportive and we can all support one another. So I'll leave a link below so you can find out a little bit more about that and you can come hang out with us. It's really 
important to hear about others' experiences and be able to like commiserate with one another and even find out what's working and what's not working for other people because it can be really helpful for you. So come hang out, join that community so that you can hang out with us and find those people. The third thing that I wish I would have known before I got started was that it is possible to get your exams paid for. I did not know this and I really wish I would have and I wish I would have done more research. So this could be a whole episode on its own. I actually just did a whole mini course. I just offered it as a bonus for my Mind Over ARE community. So they just got access to this like full on mini course that has modules and then teaching all about how to get your exams paid for, how to make money while taking your exams and how to be set up for financial success as an architect. So that is a special bonus for Mind Over ARE members. But for you, I wanted to bring in a little bit of that content because knowing that you can get your exams paid for is not anything that I knew and something that can really help you out. There's a couple ways you can do that. One is find out if your employer has any opportunities. So a lot of employers will have benefits or opportunities to have your exams paid for and or have your study materials paid for. Every employer is different. So some may only pay for past exams. Some may only reimburse after you take it. Everyone's different, but see if your employer has some sort of opportunity like that. And if they don't, inquire about that. Ask. Even if it's a small firm, just ask. I had only one full-time employee at one point and I was paying for her past exams. And I'm, you know, we were just a small firm. So ask. People are more willing than not to help support you. So see if that is something that they would be willing to do. And then there's also scholarship opportunities. I didn't really think about scholarships for the AREs. I knew, you know, there's scholarships for your school, but there's actually scholarships for AREs too. So first I would recommend reaching out to your local AIA chapter, see if they have any scholarship opportunities. And then also I'll leave a link below for some other scholarship opportunities that you can reach out for that some pay for study materials, some pay for your actual exams. And this can be huge. So many people think that the exams are just a waste of money or spend so much money to do it. But the thing is, is it's an investment. It's an investment that will be completely beneficial to your career and success. And there are opportunities to get around that cost. So that is one that I wish I would have known about and taken advantage of when I was taking my exams. So this is gonna be a short one today. I wanted it to be brief. I wanted to help you out, be actionable. So now instead of sitting here listening to my talk, I want you to go So take action. I want you to join community so that you have support. And I want you to find out if there's any scholarship opportunities that you could take advantage of. Okay. And in the meantime, if you're just ready to dive in deeper, I'll leave the ARE playlist here so that you can watch more. Go back to any of my past episodes that you want to dive into. And I will see you next week. Have a good one.